Hey there shooters, Marcus Hom back here for another video with Precision Rifle Network. Today I'm going to be answering the question of why my motorcycle has less power, why our runway has to be longer, and why my bullets fly further up here. The answer to all three of those questions, why does my motorcycle have less power, why does the runway have to be so long, and why do my bullets fly further up here, is the same thing. It's because the air is thin. We have a higher density altitude, or DA. So because the air is thinner, uh, the motorcycle doesn't get the same amount of oxygen to mix with the fuel to get good combustion, so we get less power. Because the air is thinner, the lift generated from the airplane wing isn't as great so we need a longer runway for that airplane to get up to speed and take off and because the air is thinner my bullet slows down a little bit less and therefore it flies further up here at elevation now there are some key factors that lead into density altitude and density altitude is a derived number from true elevation barometric pressure uh, temperature and humidity now, of those four things, humidity is the least contributing factor. So if you're ever plugging the data in to get uh, what your density altitude is and you don't know your actual humidity, just go with 50% and you'll be close enough. Uh, the next thing is barometric pressure. Although barometric pressure does have a large influence or a good influence, um, it doesn't really change that much. So one inch of mercury equals a thousand feet of elevation so an average day at sea level would be 29.92 uh, inches of mercury for barometric pressure and it would have to go all the way up to 30.92 or 28.92 to have a thousand foot change and usually you won't see that much swing over the course of a day so it's not a huge driver uh, the next factor of course is elevation if you shoot at sea level regularly and then you go up to a match in say South Dakota, you've got a 4,500 foot gain in elevation. So definitely your projectiles are going to fly further. They're going to slow down less because the air is thinner at uh, South Dakota, 4,500 feet elevation than it is down in uh, sea level. Now the last factor there is temperature and that's one of those things that changes quite a bit throughout the day especially here in Colorado high mountain desert um, we can wake up in the morning and it would be 30 degrees and by midday it could be 70 so that's a 40 degree shift now I told you that one inch of mercury is equal to a thousand feet of elevation change as far as density altitude is concerned 10 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 700 feet change in elevation. So if you think about it, uh, from morning 30 degrees to midday at 70, that's a 40 degree change. 40 times that 700 is uh, 2,800 feet difference of density altitude, which would definitely put you in a different band when we're talking about how well our bullets are going to fly. So how are we going to use density altitude, this one number? Um, the easiest thing to do is to use this little density altitude calculator and I'll roll in some image of it here and I'll show you guys how to use it. So here's our quick and rough way to find density altitude. First across the bottom we have temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So that can be acquired with a typical thermometer, even just one of those little keychain thermometers. Uh, one thing to remember for that is don't leave that in the sun, you know, have it in a shaded portion of your backpack or something like that. Also don't have it up against your body. Like if you're using a wristwatch, um, that's going to influence the temperature, but, um, use your thermometer and then also this says pressure altitude here. Um, pressure altitude is a derived number of your true elevation and then also barometric pressure. But as I mentioned earlier, barometric pressure doesn't really shift that much uh, or that great of swings unless you have like a hurricane or something like that coming in. So we can just use, instead of pressure altitude, we'll use our actual true elevation in feet or what you would read off of a topo map. So what we do is we find our temperature 
and then we're going to come up. So let's say right now here in Gunnison, Colorado, it's 60 degrees this morning and we come up on this line until I get to 7,000 and we're, you know, say halfway between seven and eight puts me at about 7,500 feet or 7,700 feet. And then I can come directly over and I wind up between nine and 10,000 feet of density altitude. So even though I'm only at 7,700 feet of true elevation, because of the 60 degree temperature today, it's like being at 9,500 feet on what we call a standard day. So if I was using my density altitude tables or my cards, I would use this one here in the orange and I would use the 9,000 foot density altitude card. Now, since I recommended doing it in increments of one, three, five, seven, nine, I could use the nine. If I felt like I was hitting um, high on a lot of my shots, I could use the next card up, which would be like 11. And that would actually uh, correct my shots down because since the air is thinner at 11, I'm gonna have less elevation uh, required for the same distance. So that's how we find our density altitude using the density altitude table. So now that we know how to find our density altitude, what are we gonna do with that? Well, we're gonna take that number and we're gonna plug it into our predictive algorithm. Like I use applied ballistics for my calculator and it'll allow me to enter all of my firearm parameters, you know, muzzle velocity, BC of the projectile, height over bore, all those different things. And then I can also make a range card using uh, selected density altitude. So what I'd recommend is doing it in maybe uh, 2,000 foot increments. So you could go from 1,000 to 3,000, uh, 5,000, and so on, up in 2,000 foot increments. And that should give you enough resolution out to say 1,000 or 1,100 yards that you could kind of extrapolate anything in between. So if I was say at 4,000, I could look at my 3,000 card and I could look at my 5,000 card and uh, figure out what my drop would be in between. And the nice thing about having these cards is we're not reliant on a Kestrel or pulling data uh, you know, via cell phone from the nearest weather station or something like that. We can actually do it in the field and have a good predictive drop. And really, that's kind of our goal is to be self-reliant in the field. So if you guys have any more questions about density altitude, please don't hesitate to uh, email me some questions or, or post them up here in the comments section. As always, it really helps us out if you uh, like, share, and subscribe. And please stay tuned for future videos.